In The Last Word, Shirley MacLaine is Harriet Lawler, a once successful businesswoman in tight control of every aspect of her life. As she reflects upon her accomplishments, she's suddenly inspired to engage a young local writer, Anne Sherman, played by Amanda Seyfried, to pen her life story. When the initial result doesn't meet Harriet's high expectations, to put it mildly, she sets out to reshape the way she is remembered with Anne dragged along as an unwilling accomplice. As the journey unfolds, the two women develop a unique bond which alters not only Harriet's legacy, but also Anne's future. And that's the last word in a nutshell. Joining us now on behalf of the film, director Mark Pellington, filmmaker, writer, artist, internationally recognized as one of the world's premier music video directors whose films include Going All the Way, The Mothman Prophecies, I Melt With You, Henry Poole is Here, and the upcoming Nostalgia. And Mark is here. And we're excited. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for being here. Mark, is there really such a thing as the last word? I mean, to me, as long as there's people to talk and contemplate and analyze and dissect and mull over, it's highly unlikely. It's funny that as I, as you read that description, uh, that her pen, her life story, that it, it, it fails to mention the very specific story that I don't know, like, I guess it's to let people guess. It's not like giving something away. You mean the notion of writing one's own obituary? Yes. Yeah. That right. I think probably when you look at the trailer, I mean, I think you know what the movie's about when I want you to write my obituary and I want you to write it now. So it's funny that that <laughs> yeah. doesn't mention it. That core, well, I was going to get to it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, the... the um, the this whole notion of doing that i i didn't know about legacy.com i was astonished to learn that it's a real thing that people are sort of doing this now writing their obituaries while they're still alive which i actually think would be a great exercise in a way because you would be kind of you know setting in writing a legacy possibly right on. yeah yeah and and which is kind of what this movie explores 5 years ago i was on a plane sitting next to a woman I don't know where I was coming from. And she was like writing furiously and then taking notes and glance over. It wasn't a letter. And I said, Oh, are you writing a, um, you writing a story? She goes, Oh, I'm writing my memoir. And she looked at me kind of, and she goes, she goes, no, I'm not anybody, but I think, I think my story is pretty interesting because I frankly think everybody's story is interesting. And when you strip it down to that, everybody's, everybody has a story. Everybody has a beginning, middle, and an end. Some are more interesting. Some are more filled with anecdotes. Some are more exciting. Yet even probably a very drab um, life has its peaks and valleys. And if lived long enough, probably enough experience packed in there. So I think this sense of legacy, memoir, who am I? is a kind of more, um, is connected to the Facebook social media sense of identity. We're constantly creating our identities. Younger generations are creating identities. Oh, you're curating, well, this is my music, and this is my photographs, and this is my scrambled egg sandwich, and this is my vacation in Greece. So it's presentational, identity-based image culture yeah and so the idea of reflection on mortality and legacy and legacy give us your old photos and give us your old movies we'll put it on a thumb drive for you it's just this generational wretch look back and i think it goes from young kids to older people everybody's interested in the past I mean, 80s, 90s, like if I have more people ask me about music videos I did in the 80s and 90s, I'm like, wait, that's my life. I'm still living it. Yet it's this fascination because I think there's a dissatisfaction with the present. Wow. I, you brought, okay, we're going to get to some, some of that, but, but I want to I cover some things here but, because I want to talk about yeah. the, one of the greatest actresses of all time that's the centerpiece of your movie. But mm-hmm. th- before we do that and get to some of the stuff that you just mentioned, one of the things the film for me has, it, it has this looming question hovering over it. And it, it's something that I've thought about constantly, um, being at times in a similar position as Harriet finds herself in the last word, treating people in a way that rankles them, which begs the looming question, is, 
Do you think ill treatment of people is permissible if the goal of the one ill treating is a constructive one? Getting somebody out of their shell, for example? Because it's easy to make a case for Harriet being an abusive control freak. Yeah, I don't think she's out. Good point. I think the, the scene with her daughter is, is actually a, you, answers your question. She says, Mother, I'm just like you. An obsessive, compulsive, the need to control things. And Harriet's like, as opposed to just letting them, you know, <laughs> having no input on it. Uh -huh. The need to... Blah 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 to others. So she has a con she has a response to all these things. So it's just what Harriet wants to do is just she came from a generation where she had to work harder, right? Work harder than the average woman. Twice as hard. Twice as hard. Yeah. Twice as hard yeah. to achieve. So when you do that, you don't suffer fools, and you're you call it the way you see it. As she says, I am who I am, yeah. and I think with that, with age comes wisdom and the ability just to. Cut through the clutter, sometimes cl cut, cut, cut through the, the ambiguity, yeah, the cut room. through the bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can kind of just, now, if it ever hurls into abusiveness, that's a subjective term. One person's criticism and another is another person's abuse. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it, it's these questions that you bring up that are universal that Harriet brings up. And that's the ride she goes on. Right. And you kind of see a younger woman kind of absorb it. You know, you kind of don't really know what you're learning until years later. I don't think Anne will really know what she's gotten from Harriet. She's got so some kind of perspective. Yeah. Perspective. Right, right, right. Well, I, I love, she said, Harriet says, she, was, she says as a general rule, most people are idiots that you have to treat them like dumb, stupid children, which I think I thought was really funny. But it reminded me of this thing that Lindsay Anderson, the great British film director, hmm. he was once asked what he would like to see printed on his tombstone. And do you know what he said? I don't know if he ever put this on his tombstone. Or they, he, he wanted s surrounded by fucking idiots. <laughs> it just reminded me of Harriet. And I was anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Shirley MacLaine. She's obviously at the center of the script. Uh, this story, her personal um, spiritual quest. I know she's written about it. She's incorporated it into her stage appearances. She jokes about it all the time. She joked about it the other night on the Oscars. But the story, the story's about a woman who is reviewing her life, who knows she's very nearer to the end than to the beginning, and she has to face her own mortality. Did you have any? Yeah, I was going to say this is a dumb question, but did you have any questions with or conversations with her about about this about how what this film was about related to her own life and her own experiences and her own personal spiritual quest. Yeah, we 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 had de definite conversations about certainly about death, uh, my reasons for doing the film, my experiences with death. She, she didn't talk about her past lives or anything with you. No, no. Well, she, she did, but early on. The practical nature of working on the film is makes you get specific into the present and the character as opposed to that other aspect of her personality or her, you know, her history and her interest in that didn't find its way into the character. So okay. therefore she didn't really engage in it. Yeah. I think okay. like that early on in a couple of lunches. I mentioned the painter Francis Bacon, and she goes, well, I was Francis Bacon. And I guess there was another Francis Bacon, a 16th century... Oh, the guy, the, guy, the, 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 the right, the one that supposedly wrote the Shakespeare plays, that right, guy. Yeah. Right, so she goes, I'm Francis Bacon. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, no, we were talking about two different Francis Bacons, and it was that, you know, you're finding your notes as a, as a director... As a director and an actor, you're finding that like process, like how does she like to be directed? How do you communicate to her? Oh, don't tiptoe, boy. She really she wants somebody just to make up their mind, you know. So that figuring out that rhythm. So we didn't go much into past lives and Atlantis, and you know, she she told a couple anecdotes, but she was she was mostly really all business, all very much. Focus. Focus. It sounds like she was focused on the work. Absolutely, because yeah. it was like it was. In Indy, it was 25 days. You didn't have a lot of... It wasn't like a luxurious movie. We were sitting around a lot on 
I went trailers and stuff. It was, you know, she she had a lot of work to do. Yeah. She, did you enjoy? You know, it, talking to you now, and it, it just I, it would have been cool to be on the set and watch you direct her. Um, did you? We had that. We had some interesting times. Really? <laughs> she would say, one time she told me, it's the scene when she was taking the, early on she was taking the pills out of the, she was sitting in bed, take the pills out, drink the wine. And I generally just let actors kind of do what they want the first thing and see. But I had very specific, she was, just tell me what to do. Right. Take a sip of wine, take a beat, take the pills, take two more sips of wine, Pour yourself another glass, sit there, lay down. Because this person who drinks two big sips and pours another glass pretty quickly, that's the story I want to tell. She did it. Great. So I said, let's do another take. And I started telling her, she goes, stop telling me what to do. Okay, so I don't say anything. She does it. Like 30 seconds later... Whatever the beat was, she goes, well, aren't you going to tell me what to do? I was like, wait a second. Okay. It's like, <laughs> wait, we got to get on the same page here. You want me to tell you what to do or not? Like, once you work out those bumps, mm -hmm. and like, so each scene is different. Some scenes be left alone. Some scenes I'm like, we're just going to roll, come in the room, you and Amanda, whatever happens, happens. Don't worry about it. Other times it was very specific. You know, she, she liked being kind of, I'm fairly stream of consciousness. I think yeah. once she got adjusted to that, she liked it because sometimes I would just discover something in the moment, say, Shirley, Shirley, okay, come over here. And then, But she would have an idea, like, I want to come down the steps with her scarf, which was very much like a ritualistic preparing for death. She goes, I want to try this thing. Like, I'm like, great. You know, she would bring such experience to it yeah it's a specific I can yeah sure detail yeah nothing was just like ah, i'm just gonna do it this way you'd see her listen to you, give her direction you'd see her focus you'd see her in the moment so you're really listening to the other actors she would even say something just i look the little girl you got to do this with her or i don't think this is like she wasn't afraid because she knows that her performance was going was in relationship to the other actors yeah. So she would give me tips, and she goes, tell her to do this. Catherine Keener is the same way. Great actors want to make everybody around them better yeah. and aren't afraid to tell you how to do it. We're talking to Mark Pellington, and we're talking about the last word. Um, th there's a lot in the film I think I was really enjoyable. And um, uh, my, my favorite element, one of my favorite elements of the script was that notion that this holy terror of a, of a woman who e even a priest found hard to, to say something nice about, which was actually pretty funny. But the notion that she would laugh uncontrollably when she realized she was wrong about something, <laughs> that's such a great script device, story device. It's really good. And I tell you, it's the curveball in her scene with Anne Heche that um, I don't know if you saw the film with other people or by yourself. But I tell you, when you watch the film with a lot of people, we premiered it at Sundance. Sundance, yeah. 1,500 people. Uh -huh. And that moment when she just starts laughing and builds and builds, and then, you know, no, I was, I was a good mother, is, it brings down the house. Yeah. And it's a really interesting, it's an interesting way, it's a non-traditional way to kind of resolve that mother-daughter story, then in a way doesn't end with, okay, mutual forgiveness and everything's going to be okay. Right, right. She is, again, to to the end, self-absorbed. Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, and, and to that and to that end, too, and I was, I was talking to Mark about this on the way up, but one, one of the things I liked about the script, you know, there's a, there's a, a scene where she's, she becomes an indie music radio station DJ in, in the movie. Uh, not giving away too much, but that yeah. anyway, we, and, and, and she's, she's doing her sign off and most people would sign off. They would say like, have a nice day. And she says, please don't have a nice day. Have a day that matters. Have a day that's true. Have a day that's honest. Have a day that's direct. A nice day. You'll be miserable. Have a day that means something. Make time, make this time mean something. Bingo. The best testament uh, to my personal theory that nice is overrated. 
It's overrated. She improv that whole thing. She no. Yes, that whole thing. She we we didn't have anything scripted. And I so said, that was her, I said we need her. a moment of her at some point in the latter wow. third of the movie. That was my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. I, that was just my favorite part of the movie. Really, and yeah. she, so the, so maybe there was a little bit of her in there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, the whole movie starts with pictures of her. Right. It's Harriet Lawler. She, and she was a little worried. She goes, well, but people are going to see, they're going to see pictures of me over the years. I said, but who's Harriet Lawler and who's you? If, if I want to, how am I going to get pictures of Harriet Lawler when she's younger? This is a woman's a life story. And at the end, she's looking back at her life from a place of death. In a dark room, a coffin-shaped silhouette, yeah. looking back at her life. Right, right. Okay, so we're, we're, we just have a minute left here. Um, mm-hmm. So are the Kinks most, the most underrated band of all time? She thinks so. <laughs> Stuart Fink, the writer, thinks so. <laughs> yeah. so I was did, like, oh, okay, that's did, cool. Did you pick the songs? Did you pick the, uh, the Waterloo Bridge song? I mean, there were so many other good... Uh, that was in the too. script. Great screen. Yeah, great no, soundtrack. No. Mm-hmm. The music supervisor, Liza Richardson, would just give us tons and tons of music. Carmen Morrow, the assistant editor, Julia Wong, the editor, and I, between the three of us, we kind of chose the songs for each scene. Yeah. Okay. I love doing that. Okay. All right. Well, the film is the last word. Do you want to have the last word here, Mark? Or nope. I want you to have it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'll just say we've been in conversation with uh, the director of The Last Word, Mark Pellington. Mark, thank you for your time. Thank Marvelous you. Marvelous chap. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.